my name is Volker Simonis. I am working for SAP in the SAP JVM team. We are doing uh, our, our own uh, Java VM, which is based on the, the Oracle, Sun, OpenJDK, Hotspot VM. We are also working in the OpenJDK project. We have contributed the uh, AAX and PowerPC port to the OpenJDK. So if you have general question about OpenJDK, you can also ask me later. So the talk today is a little bit more basic. It's uh, about how final is final. So it's uh, wha what's the, the meaning of final and how is it uh, handled in the VM. So maybe you know this picture, some of you. I already have some children. I'm not that young anymore. So when I tell them some stories and and somebody dies, this is a very hard concept for children to understand. And then they like the story with water of life and water of death. And then the good guy dies in the story and then he gets some water of life and he lives again. And for children, like, they don't understand if somebody, uh, animal or something dies, they always ask me, yes, but he's dead now, but tomorrow he will be again. Yes, we give him water of life and that's it. And I took this picture because for me that's a little bit similar to how final is handled in Java, because actual final from the language definition uh, it says that it's really final. So a final variable may be only assigned once, and once a final variable has been assigned, it always contains the same value. So I mean that's a clear statement, but uh, unfortunately in real life it's more like this water of life. Somebody comes and can change the final uh, variable. Uh, we will see later how this can be done and what effects this uh, has. Um, so uh, this is a. Uh, uh, can anybody re everybody read the code? Yes. Okay. So this is a simple uh, Java program. If you want to compile it, probably everybody sees we we get a compilation error because the Java compiler say the final variable has not been initialized. So Java C is very picky that variable Java final variables get initialized, and it's very picky that they get initialized exactly once. So uh, if you do something like this. If we declare a private final variable in, then initialize it, and then in the constructor we overwrite it. That will also not work because uh, Java C will tell us, well, the cannot assign a, uh, another value to a final variable. So we can also use this uh, instance initializers, and uh, but we do if we do it two times again, we will get a compiler error because once we have initialized it here in the initializer and then in the constructor, so this will not work. So, uh, uh, we since Java 1.1, we can uh, use blank final, so we just declare them and then define them only in the, in the constructor, that's possible. And that, that makes things easier if, uh, for example, initialization of a variable can throw an exception and we have to build a try-catch block around it, and so that's much easier if to do that in a constructor. So, uh, what do you think will this code compile? So, we have a, a final variable and we have an if-else clause, and uh, if uh, the f is smaller, bigger than 0, we initialize to f and else to 42. So, you think this will work in Java C? Yes, this will work. So. So Java C does a certain amount of flow analysis, this will work, but it doesn't do very much. So if you have take this example, which is semantically exactly the same, so if f is uh, bigger than zero, or if f is smaller than zero, but not with else, with two if clauses, we will get a compiler error. So it will say variable f might already have been initialized. So uh, they, a a as uh, Raphael already told, Java C is not optimizing very much, and it's also not uh, trying very hard to analyze your program to to be smart about it. <coughs> so these are other examples. When we try something like this, do you think this will succeed or not? So um, this will fail because uh, Java C will, s will say that uh, this is in the try and catch clause and e even though everybody sees that there cannot be any exception here, say variable f might not have been initialized because we have a uh, empty catch clause and if you try this it won't help as well because uh, again Java C will then complain that at this place it may be that we already have initialized it so also everybody see that this is actually mutually exclusive here but uh, it's not hi Java C is not very smart so uh, 
now let's take this example so th th this variable is not final now here right so then we can initialize it here in a try catch clause and uh, without final that that works fine and uh, on the right side you see uh, the bytecode generated uh, by uh, Java C for for this code on the left side so I if you follow Rafael's talk uh, you probably understand all this and uh, actually you can get the bytecode of, uh, of, of a class with the Java P tool which is uh, contained in every JDK and uh, it says that here we have the public field F and here it is loaded and initialized and so on now again if, if we change this variable to uh, to final Java C won't do it anymore it, it will give us an error but uh, if we use for example Raphael's byte body or, or, uh, or another uh, bytecode generating tool uh, we, we could manage uh, to uh, to create such a class which has a, a final field int and initializes uh, the field exactly like in like uh, like in the in this Java code which wouldn't compile with Java C so this is legal because uh, the JVM's definition of final is a little bit different from Java's uh, definition of final. So JVM, so the JVM defines just the, the bytecode is the specification of the Java virtual machine and the bytecode how it works. While Java language is ha has another uh, specification. It's about the Java language. So the JVM definition only say that uh, a put field that's a bytecode the put field or, or a final field must occur in, in, a, in a constructor. That's all w uh, what's defined in the JVM definition. So actually, actually we can use uh, many assignments of a final field uh, if we do that in the constructor. We can even not assign a final field in the constructor if you are generating bytecode on our own. Uh, and in this case, uh, the final fields will have the default values which is zero for the primitive types and null for object references. Um, okay. And actually, if you don't use a uh, byte body uh, and you want to generate bytecode yourself, actually the, the a a ASM library is now part of JDK 8. Since JDK 8, you can do you just have to use uh, this option if you compile uh, XD ignore symbol file because it's in a private package uh, in JDK internal org object web ISM and uh, Java C will reject uh, these uh, packages if you don't use this option but uh, I mean I won't go through this code now just uh, for interest if you look at, this at the slides after afterwards you, you can see how it is possible to to uh, to implement the bytecode which I, I showed you on the on the previous slide, it's it's actually not 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 too hard. I even writing bytecode by hand, you just uh, create all these bytecodes. So if you if you use Java P to disassemble a class file and understand it, then you can easily write a similar assembler file in in bytecode assembler yourself. So now. Uh we come to another uh, problem which can happen with finals. So people usually think that uh, finals I it's good to have finals and they, c they can safely be used. But uh, if you take this example here, we have a final field F and we have a, a, an initializer class in uh, uh, instance initializing block which calls a function foo and foo prints uh, the value of F. And then, but actually we only initialize F in the constructor not uh, not right at the uh, declaration time so this uh, program will first print uh, f equals 0 and then f equals 42 so this is because uh, if uh, this is a problem of uh, escaping this point it's it's so called uh, uh, this ref escaping this reference and this is a well known uh, cause of, of many problems that you shouldn't let uh, this pointer escape before the constructor hasn't finished. Because in, 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 in this example program, uh, even before the constructor will be run, for every uh, new uh, test age object which will be created, foo will be called. Uh, and, and foo already uses this to access the, 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 uh, the, the member field f. But at this uh, place, f is, is initialized and the compiler cannot detect this. 
and so uh, you, you'll get an uh, uninitialized access. You won't get any error, but uh, simply the variable isn't initialized. Uh, yeah, so uh, you should avoid this. The same problem uh, can occur uh, even with uh, static variables. It's a similar problem. You have a, a private static final field f and you initialize this field in a static initializer. You have to do that. You cannot do it in a constructor, obviously, because it's static. And uh, now, uh, if we uh, instantiate a, a, a H2 class, we will get this output 0 and 42. So again, when we before we can uh, initialize, uh, before we can create a new test H object, the static class initializer has to run and he will initialize uh, the, the f field, but for that he calls the foo function and foo already accesses the field f before it initializes it. So it ag again, it's a similar problem. And uh, this problem uh, recently hit me in JDK 9. Uh, when I discovered this bug, I opened this bug uh, in OpenJDK. You can have a look at it if you want. Uh, these are all links in the slides, so you can uh, uh, grab the slides from my homepage and uh, if you're interested in. So the problem with JDK 9 is that it has the new module system and uh, one, one uh, thing that they have reworked is that th to modularize the JDK they put uh, some of the extended character sets in, uh, in an uh, extend extended module it, uh, in JDK 7, 8 and before all the character set encodings have been in the runtime jar file. So now some there are some basic character sets which are in, in, a, in a Java base image and all the others are in extended uh, images. And when the JDK now starts up, it has to uh, figure out the boot class pass. And the boot class pass is saved in the static uh, final variable. But for parsing the boot class pass, it needs uh, the character encodings. So if you start, for example, on a uh, Vietnamese machine or if you put uh, Esperanto as local on your machine, something more exotic, uh, the VM will need to load uh, the module with the extended character sets. But for loading the module with the extended character sets, again, it needs, the needs to access the boot class pass. So you have exactly this here, and it's not so obvious to see it because the recursion happens like uh, uh, you know, about 10 call uh, uh, hierarchies later. And uh, actually, it's not easy to solve this problem, so probably uh, the VM will only start with uh, the character sets which are the default ones and not with extended anymore. <coughs> so now again I have uh, another test program here and it has a public final integer field it's, uh, which will be initialized in the constructor and we have let's say we have a function uh, set which can magically change this value. I uh, will we will see how this can be done later. So if you create uh, now a, a, a test object and then uh, reset the, the final field and print it, well, yes, obviously it will print 99. So how is it now possible uh, to change this if the Java C compiler doesn't allow it us and even the JVM uh, definition doesn't allow us to change final fields? Well, there are several uh, possibilities. The maybe the one of the easiest is JNI. So if you write JNI code, the JNI specifications say the JNI does not enforce class, field, and method access control restrictions that can be expressed at the Java programming language level. Because anyway in JNI you're in C and anyway you, you, you can access uh, all the memory uh, in the way you want. So they didn't even try to catch such, such errors. So you can easily write a JNI method which changes a, a final field. Uh, here, here is how, how it goes. So if we uh, define our set method like native, and this will be the native implementation, it's just, just three lines of code. We get uh, the class of the object. Well, the, the, uh, the a every JNI method uh, has three parameters. It gets a JNI environment, which is actually a pointer to the VM. Then it gets the, the this pointer, so th that's the object. Uh, and uh, it gets uh, all then all the other uh, parameters from the function. So this has only one parameter. So it's this jint. This is C code now, a C++ code. Now from the environment, we can get uh, a reference to the class representation 
of, of, of our this object. This is a, a class representation of the test i class. And then from, uh, from, from this class, we, 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 we can get a reference to the field. See, this is the, the type of the field. It's an integer field. This is the name, just uh, as a string. And this is the class representation. And from the environment with the get field ID method, we will get a, a reference to the field ID. And then we can just call this is uh, so this these functions get object class get field ID set in field is just defined in the in the JNI specification. So then we can call set in field uh, and and just set this field. There is nothing which prevents us from doing this. So there is now a uh, 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 request for enhancement. Uh, it's hard to read it, and it says final fields in objects need to support inline optimization. So this uh, is uh, Vladimir Ivanov from, from Oracle, he from St. Petersburg. He is working on this topic in a way to change uh, the, this, the, 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 this chain I methods uh, that uh, they detect uh, accesses to final fields and, and record them and, uh, for example, de-optimize uh, just-in-time compiled methods which uh, optimize the final fields uh, w w by thinking they are, they are really final. Uh, and de-optimize them in the case somebody uh, does such uh, uh, such changes to final fields. But this is still ongoing work. If he will succeed, then uh, the JIT will be able to optimize a lot more uh, code, which is final or static final. So uh, another possibility uh, is probably the easiest one: is just reflection. So uh, we, c we, c we could implement our set method uh, in this way. So, by the way, I don't encourage uh, everybody to, to do this. I, I want just want to show you what it, it's possible and maybe some s s uh, to, to keep this in mind because some libraries are doing this and I just want to make uh, you aware of that you cannot rely that finals are really final. And it, it's that easy to, to, uh, to, uh, to change it. Uh, so, we just use uh, Java Lang reflection field we get the class object from this, so th uh, this again is Java code, so we get the class, then we get the declared field again with the string, and then we have to set it accessible because uh, in Java the, 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 the virtual machine has the information that this field is final and we shouldn't be allowed to change it, but it still has gives us a method which is called set accessible. If you set the field accessible flag to true, then we are uh, we, we can do uh, everything we want, so we can e even change it. Of course, the calling this function is protected by a security manager, so if you are running uh, with security manager in a secure environment, this, this wouldn't work, uh, and uh, I think that's good, but uh, a lot of people are running without security manager. Okay, uh, a similar new um, a possibility with uh, Java 8 and 9, uh, 7 already actually, is to use method handles. It works similar like the example with, uh, with reflection, but first we have to get the, the field uh, and set it to accessible and then we can use a method handle uh, by calling method handles lookup and then we say we want uh, a method handle for setting a field for this field and uh, we can pass that around to, to other code and uh, use it, uh, for example, in the bootstrap method or, or otherwise, and actually the if, if this uh, method handle will be executed with invoke exact, it will actually change the, the value of the final field. So and the last one is the famous, infamous uh, SunMisk unsafe. Uh, again, the hardest thing is to, to get an instance of unsafe. This is all, all, all this code here because uh, SunMisk unsafe has a, a private uh, constructor, so it's not that easy to instantiate an unsafe class, but uh, just googling for unsafe, you will uh, immediately find how to do it. So you, uh, again, you have to use reflection to get uh, a, a reference to the unsafe constructor. And uh, once you have this unsafe constructor, again, you set it set accessible to true. So uh, Java, so the VM will, will not check the access field, so it will, it will override the private uh, nature of the of the constructor and then you can say uh, unsafe constructor new instance which will actually construct you an unsafe object and once you have the unsafe object uh, it, it's just two lines of code uh, to change uh, a final field again you use reflection to get a reference to 
uh, to um, the, the the final field, and then you use unsafe put int. Actually, with this method, you you, you can change uh, every memory in, in your VM, and you can uh, easily uh, b break the whole VM by writing some values into the memory into the heap wherever you want. But in this case, we say we want to put a int uh, change an integer value at this uh, at this address at a at a point in the heap where the object is living and the offset will be the offset of this field and this is the value we, we, we change so um, again uh, this this uh, request for enhancements which I showed you below uh, wi wi tries to uh, to handle SunMisk unsafe and NJNI because um, actually uh, the other two possibilities with reflection and method handles is internally implemented uh, by using unsafe in, in the virtual machine so if you can manage if the virtual machine can manage to catch all these excesses in, in unsafe and in JNI code which uh, alter the value of, of final fields and handle that appropriately then uh, also the other possibilities will be handled uh, automatically so let's take another example um, what I want you to share here. Uh, now I remember. So uh, we have a, t uh, a new class with a public final uh, field which is initialized to 42. And uh, we uh, we uh, create uh, a new instance of test M and we, 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 we check if test M, uh, if the F field of test M is 42. Then we print unchanged and we also print the value of the field with the help of reflection. So we say get declared field f and get int value. And then with our one of our methods, which we know now, we change the, the final field to 99 and print it again. So if uh, the field is 42, we will print unchanged and otherwise change and then the value. So uh, what do you think what, 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 what this program wi will print? So what will print the first line? So I think obviously yes, it will print unchanged and 42 because we, we haven't done anything, so that's true. But uh, maybe for some of you it will be astonishing that the second line will also print unchanged but 99. So uh, does somebody know why this happens? I have some beer cards, so yeah, please. Подождите, пожалуйста. I think this happens simply because uh, 42 uh, was hard coded to uh, class. Uh, yeah, that's six, the right yeah. answer. You want the dark or dark <laughs> beer or the <laughs> whatever? <laughs> okay, you can take it after the. Yeah, that that's exactly the the right answer. So uh, I told you that Java C compiler is not very smart, but in some circumstances it tries to be smart. So the Java defines something like constant variables and. Uh, variables of primitive type and string which are final and initialized with a compile time constant expression so compile time constant expression that is defined in the java language specification in a long uh, section which you can read uh, by following this link uh, then these kind of, of variables they they are resolved at compile time so it says uh, Reference to fields that are constant variables are resolved at compile time to the constant value that is denoted. No reference to such a constant field should be present in the code. So it means that the class file even does not contain uh, uh, a reference to a field, but it just contains. Uh, uh, oh, I should have. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. So th this was the first example, right, where we initialized it with the constant uh, not in the constructor and the generated bytecode looks like this so you push 42 on the stack you push 42 on the stack and and then you do the comparison Th that's the the bytecode which gets generated so even if we change the final field the we change the final field this code here is just pushing 42 and 42 so that's why i used reflection here to get the value because with reflection we are actually querying the, the actual value in the heap but Java C already replaced this reference with 42 and this happens for final primitive fields and final strings which are initialized like this 
so which uh, are constant expressions as uh, described in the Java language specification. So, so in this case where we initialize the variable in the constructor, these are not considered uh, constant uh, constant values, con constant variables, which is a, a strange uh, name, constant variables. But these are not considered constant variables, and so the the bytecode which gets generated just uh, does a, a pushes the the object. So this means we 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 push the this pointer, which is on, uh, the first local variable, which is of uh, type test m, and it's the name of the of of the field, and then 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 we we load the field from from the the field f from from the object. So actually, when we change the object with how, however, which whatever means, uh, we will we will get uh, the the right value here because Java C will not uh, replace this uh, field reference with a constant. Also, the code looks similar, so many people would say it's the same, but it's actually not the same. And this is also uh, a problem uh, called uh, interface. Uh, I forgot how it's called, but. Uh, if you if you for example define some final variables in your interface and uh, I instantiate them this way and uh, you have some some classes which depend on it and and later on you you change your interface you have to recompile the client classes which are using your interface Other otherwise they still use the old value because it's just compiled as as uh, in the class files in in your, your client libraries so this is a little bit dangerous Uh, there is a Java puzzler covering uh, this this problem number 93 from from Neil Gafter. You probably know Java puzzlers. You can Google it on the net or look uh, in his book. Okay, so now I come to to a, a bigger example. Uh, let's briefly go through through this program to see what it does. So we have a a, a, a test class and. Uh I don't see it very good from here. Uh, we have a test class and uh, it has one field, a, a static field, which contains an instance of the test class itself. And it just initializes with 42. And the, the test class itself has another uh, non-static field, uh, but final, which is an integer. And again, we have now we have two set methods. One sets the, the static field of the class and another one uh, sets the f field, the instance field o o of an instance of the of the object. And we have uh, this is the constructor which initial initializes the instance field, and uh, we have a get f method uh, which checks if uh, the, the 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 static test field uh, if it's uh, integer field is 42, it will return 42, otherwise it will return the value of this field. And now we do various tests. So do you understand this code or so are there any questions? So we have a class test, it has a, a, st a static field which contains an instance of the test class and uh, every instance of the test has a, a final integer field f. Okay, so uh, when we print, uh, when we create uh, a new call test uh, get f for the first time, I think everybody agrees it should be uh, 42 because uh, the the static the the, the static field uh, when 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 use uh, the, the test class uh, the class initializer will just uh, initialize this field by uh, creating a new test object wi with 42. Now when we call set test to change uh, the, the underlying uh, to change this, this static field in the class uh, with a new test object which is initialized to 99 uh, it will print 99 so I think everybody will agree that that's, that's true. So now we create, a, we create a second test object which is initialized to, to 42 and set it again. So now uh, the test, the static test field in the test class contains 42 again, and we will 
Execute in a loop now 20,000 times, get F and check if it's 42. Otherwise we will print uh, exclamation marks. Uh, somebody who thinks that uh, we will print uh, exclamation marks. So no, ah, one, uh, somebody said. Okay. So actually, no, the value is still 42. <laughs> but nice try, thank you that you <laughs> tried. <laughs> so, actually, I do this loop here, you probably know, because uh, in, in this loop uh, we will finally JIT compile the getf method. Until here everything runs interpreted. Um, but, uh, well, I mean, w w we set the test field to 42, so it cannot ha have other value than 42 here. Now, after we have JIT compiled uh, the, the get test method, we reset uh, the, the static field to 99 again and call uh, test get f. So what do you think? Will it be 99 or 42? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, one time you have to must be right. I mean, if you always say the same number, you will be you <laughs> will have. <laughs> it's like multiple choice. <laughs> so, what 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 did happen here? So, uh, at uh, at this point when we JIT compile uh, the get test method, uh, the the static final field points to a test object which has 42, and the JIT compiler see this is a final field and it's static, so hey, this cannot change, let, let, let's optimize it. And it we, will, we will look at the uh, at at code which was generated just in a second. But it will actually, now when we call this here, it calls the compiled method and the compiled method just will load this object here because it's just in the code. And when we change it later on, this reference, uh, this, this will change in the heap, but I in the compiled method it will still load the, the old object which was actual at the time when the, compi the JIT compiler ran, because he thought it will never change. So that's why we still have 42. Okay, now, now we think, okay, now we know how it worked, so we don't have to change, if we change the, the, the static field, uh, this, this won't change the value, because the compiler, as I told you, has inlined the value, so why not just uh, change uh, the only the, the integer in the instance? So this should work, right? Because uh, the compiler has only inlined the, the static field. And if we uh, access the integer in the static member, it should change to 99. So do you think the output will be 99? Who thinks it's 99? Somebody. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's a good answer. <laughs> so uh, actually it's 42. And uh, this is because you have to carefully think what you've done here. We the the compiler has inlined the address of this object into the compiled code and later we have replaced the the the, uh, the object to which this final field is pointing to a new one so if we now access this object we will actually access this one so test test I, it, it's, it's this pointing to this object now and in this object we are setting f to 99 it already it actually it is already 99 but uh, it doesn't doesn't uh, affect the compiled code, so it still prints 42. And now comes uh, the last question. So I didn't even answer it myself until now. So what do you think? What will the output? What will be if we 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 now change the value of this f this object here? This is the one that was inlined into the compiled code. So for that one, we we, we set the instance variable to 99. So would this be will this be 99 or 42? So who is for 99? Okay, half about. And who is for 42? The other half. Okay. Let's see at the at the generated code. So when we run with this option, minus xx trust final non-static fields, then the answer will be 99. So this is actually the default setting of this uh, of this uh, option. So so if you just run Java without changing any option then uh, then the output will be 99 so that's what that, that's what most people would probably expect that's 99 because yeah so and thi this is the code uh, that was generated 
by, by the VM. So you can ignore the first part, it's just uh, building up the, the stack frame. And then uh, the generated code now loads a test field. Please ignore this final uh, names here because I in my tests, in my actual tests, o o all the test classes are inner classes of the final class. So this is actually the test class. So we now we now load an object of this type of test, and this is here the address. So this is actually the by the the digit compiler assume this is a constant address into the R10 register, and then by offset uh, uh, 16, uh, no, 12, o at offset 12, from within this object, it loads the field F. So actually you can get this nice output uh, if you use the uh, disassembler. Uh, you can say, uh, you can use the hotspot, if you build a debug version of the hotspot, you can say print assembly minus xx print assembly or minus xx compile command and then print and a function name then every command which will uh, every function which will be compiled by the JIT compiler will be printed in in such a nice way. You, there are actually two versions. You can get the so-called opto assembly which is a more generic assembly which also has some block information and only only sy symbolic assembler instructions and if you have uh, the so-called disassembler library, which can be built together with the OpenJDK, then you will actually get uh, the real uh, assembler code, which is also executed when the method uh, runs. Okay, and now then then we will we, we load the the field f from from the object and compare it with 42. And if it's equal to 42, we just return 42. Otherwise. We have this strange jump here, which jumps behind the red statement, so that the return statement, that, that seems weird, but uh, unfortunately I cannot show this uh, live. I wanted to do it, but uh, somehow my computer didn't work, so I only have the slides, but I can tell it. Uh, there is some more code here, which is uh, so-called uncommon trap. So when, when the compiler compiled this method, it knew already that we called it 20,000 times, and every time the result of this comparison was true and only this part of the branch was executed so actually for the other for the other part also it's just a return statement with uh, with the value it even didn't generate code so it just returned the uncommon blob so if that would ever happen then uh, this method would get deoptimized and uh, recompiled again so this was the case with uh, trust wi when we not when we are not trusting final non static fields so when we are trusting final static non-static fields, the result would be 42. And this is because when we run with this option, the compiled code would be actually collapsed to just a return statement, just 42. Because the JIT compiler assumes, okay, the test field is a, it's a static final field, so it would never change. This is something the VM does by default. So by default, it trusts static final fields to never change. But it is not trusting non-static final fields because it know people do all kind of stuff and uh, so but we can say him to, to, to be more trustworthy and then he will not only trust that the, s the static final test field will be unchanged but he will also uh, look what uh, value is uh, stored in that field actually and it's 42 and he will assume it will never change and he will just collapse it to return 42 so there is another jab here, an another request for enhancement, uh, which is called "Final fields in objects need to support inlining optimizations for JR292." So, this option is actually turned on by default for final fields, non-static final fields in these packages, Java Lang Invoke and Sun Invoke, uh, but not for user code or for all other packages. You can turn it on for user code by using this option here. Okay, so we see w it's not, not, not so easy with the final and it's also not easy changing the, the meaning of final or how this is really handled. So uh, when, when Sun and Oracle came up with JSR 292, they realized that it's quite slow in some circumstances because one of the reasons was that they cannot optimize like I showed you before. You have a lot of call change uh, when you have method handles which are actually 
which uh, which depend on fields which are not final but on fields which are only initialized one time in the constructor but they cannot be final because they have to be maybe initialized not in the constructor but in a but later after the object object was constructed but from the design of the lambda uh, from the design of invoke dynamic library it's clear that these fields can only be initialized once so inside uh, java lang invoke package there is a, an annotation it's called add stable and a stable annotation because it's in java lang invoke it can only it's uh, it's protected it can only be used inside that package and it's used there heavily and all fields uh, which are annotated with this table annotation are treated by the JIT compiler like static final fields. So they are optimized like constants. And this, this, uh, this change uh, brought a, a big performance improvement. Uh, this is controlled uh, by this uh, extended options fold stable values and use implicit stable values. So the second option even allows the compiler to optimize fields in in these packages java lang invoke which are not annotated with stable uh, a, a, a stable if it sees that they are uh, well that the JIT, the, the JIT compiler does profiling and if it sees that there were an, a, a field was uh, uh, initialized just once before it gets JIT optimized it can and you see there is no other uh, assignments in the code and it can it assumes that it's stable and it can optimize it like this and uh, yeah, there are vari various other requests for enhancement and bug reports which handle uh, these um, these kind of uh, optimizations. So uh, yeah, actually that's it. Uh, uh, do you have any additional questions? Yes, please. Uh, does Java pass GCK with trust final or static fields option? I mean, passing TCK doesn't mean a lot. Uh, you can, for example, pass TCK in interpreted mode. I mean, you don't have to do JIT compilation. You can pass it with the C1 compiler. With d uh, default options, but with just... just I, I, I think... I, I haven't tried it, but I think it, it may pass. And the, the, the as I say, TCK is a com compatibility kit. It's not. Uh, I I it's not. It's not a, a, a good test. So I don't know. You are you are aware how to run the the TCK test? It's actually a big test suite with millions of tests, and you have a test harness, and you run the tests. And for most tests, you even you your method won't be compiled, JIT compiled, because uh, they they just test. Uh, they call one function and see it does was it it's necessary then call the next one they don't call the functions 20,000 times to exercise the JIT compiler to exercise the GC and even if you get a failure it's perfectly legal to just restart the test and you restart it and then it gets green because maybe you, you do 10,000 tests in a row and then the 10,000 first test fails because it was at, th at that point some something was JIT compiled then you just start over the test suite and the first test will succeed because at that time nothing will be compiled so this this is how everybody does TCK tests. So this is o o only only to get a stamp. Okay, that's fine. But the idea of the question was if uh, GTK will work as expected uh, if I use this uh, weird option. Ah, uh, you mean if I think I think moral. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, many frameworks uh, hate final, uh, but is there uh, any reason to use final in daily life programming? Yes, sure. I mean, actually, you should use final because it should enable the JIT compiler to produce better code. But because people are misusing final, JIT compiler has to be very restrictive. Uh, uh, and but uh, these changes which I referenced, they try to catch all the possibilities where final fields can be changed and to de-optimize methods in that case. But it's it's very complicated because uh, also uh, I, I I showed you the code where we had uh, these this uh, static final field which was uh, inlined in in into the no where was it here. So, actually, 
th 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 this seems very it's just just a, a constant right in the code but i mean th th this this object is it's in the heap and gc may move this object so this m means every time a gc runs the vm has to scan all the compiled methods which are in, in, in the code cache and uh, update all the reference to objects in the heap which are hard coded into the code so this co can can cost a considerable amount of time and uh, it's the same with uh, these uh, enhancements which I spoke of if you try to catch all the accesses to final fields and in the case somebody is doing it de-optimize all, all, all the relevant functions you may probably have to you, you must scan the code cache which might be many megabytes of code and, and de-optimize these methods and then recompile again so that this is uh, uh, also a performance problem but maybe you wanted to ask something else I don't know uh, thank you. Actually, uh, before I think, little comment. Uh, final is just uh, like a premature optimization, just all. Excuse me, it's a uh, no premature opti opti optimization. Uh, yeah. Maybe for disposable objects uh, we should use final, but uh, actually I d uh, rarely uh, see. A final is also good for. I mean, for documentation reason, if you if you say that uh, I mean, if you write code and and say a variable is final, you express your intent that you don't want somebody else to change it later on. So especially if you have like spaghetti code with thousands of lines functions, it's good if you declare when you first wrote a function, it's like ten lines, and you say my fun my 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 variable is final, but maybe other people say why did you put final there i mean it's clear that nobody assigns to this variable but if your code grows to several thousand lines of code maybe somebody changes somewhere inside the method and this may be a problem so if you put the final li right in there he will see ah it's final so if i change it there i have to pay attention that it's also used later on in the function with the old value maybe so thank you documentation reasons Uh, in the very first example, uh, where you had uh, initialization to 42 of that final variable um, yeah. in constructor, so if that 40, uh, what what happens if you call the getter several times? Uh, does it get JIT compiled again and would return um, initial value, not the changed one? This one? I oh know the very first where you had 42 in constructor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, like the no. <laughs> <laughs> this one, or um, yeah, like this, for example. Yes. So, so something uh, probably next. So it. Okay. So mm -hmm. so, so what do you mean if uh, uh so ah yeah if I get you, you had a test when you change the value uh, and then you get it and you get the changed value uh, after right yes but uh, yes exactly in in this case if i w would uh, just jit compile this one uh oh i mean if you if you have a get method for example yeah yeah so it would be jit compiled eventually and you would get the very initial it doesn't matter uh, do you put initialization in line, having uh, compile time constant, or uh, in the constructor, for example? When you JIT compile, you always get the, the actual yeah, the value. Yeah, the actual yeah. value, yeah, right? the actual value, yes. Yeah. Or wherever it was wherever when it was yes, uh, yes. JIT compiled. Yes, okay. not the initial value, uh, yes. Is there any way uh, other than um, that parameter to somehow guarantee that uh, your method doesn't get JIT compiled and will return the the latest value? Uh, yeah, you can just exclude it from JIT compilation with uh, there is a possibility to, to have a hotspot compiler file dot mm -hmm. thing dot hotspot compiler or you can use the minus xx compiler command option and there you can not only say print function name you can also say exclude function name mm -hmm. and then uh, all, all functions with this name you can use wildcards and classes and class all, all methods from one class or all methods named get or so you can exclude them from compilation 
but that's hotspot specific. But I think other VMs like J9 have similar options to exclude mm -hmm. exclude special uh, s certain functions from compu JIT compilation. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, also, there is a way to change uh, that final modifier by reflection. Uh, does it change anything? Uh, is it uh, excuse me? Uh, there is a way to change uh, uh, final modifier through reflection. So you yeah, but as, as I told you, reflection is actually implemented by unsafe in, in the JDK, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's, it's the same. Yeah. I just was wondering, were there a valid use cases for like allowing to modify final fields through the JNI and through the unsafe so that now, uh, like, I all those uh, options are possible, yeah, or is uh, it just a historical like artifact? I, I think historically it was re required uh, for deserialization. So when y when deserialization creates an object which has a final field, it uh, needs a possibility to, to set this field because you deserialize the object, you create it, and only after you have created the object, you can uh, fill in the fields. So I think this was the first use case. Then uh, I'm not very familiar with all, the but I think a, a lot of um, libraries now, serialization libraries use the same. A lot of libraries are using uh, this, how is it called, create object or what you were talking? Allocate instance, yeah, which uh, it's a method in reflection, right? No, in, in unsafe, in unsafe. So a lot of mock-up uh, libraries uh, use this to create object and then they have to to use these possibilities to set the field. So there it's, there it's valid because at that when you create the object, uh, it's not used at that time. So you can, you can safely set it there, but it can be misused for other cases. Okay. Time to. Time for lunch. So you can ask me at yeah. lunch. Okay.